Okay, this is my uh, JVC TD711 that I've got listed on Reverb. And uh, I want to do some of the tests that I've run on the deck and demonstrate its performance. Excellent performance. It's a beautiful deck. I've done extensive work to it. Uh, you can read about it on the, on the listing. And I'm just going to go through quickly some of the things here, try to keep the video short. But I'll start out with a uh, wound flutter test. I've got an old uh, RCA 3 kilohertz wound flutter cassette here, right there. It's got a, it's an old tape, it's still good. It's got a few dropouts in it. If it hits any of those dropouts while I'm doing the test, you'll see it spike and I'll, I'll uh, reset it. But I think it should be okay right here. I'm going to start the test. I've already got everything set up. I've got the uh, uh, analyzer zeroed. I've got it set at zero dB and so forth and what I need to do. So I'm going to just start the tape here. You can see it's playing about zero dB. And I'm going to start my inputs takes about 10 seconds and look up here turn that up a little bit and you'll see the wound flutter up here right here it takes about 10 seconds for it to balance out or average out and there's there's the numbers that we're getting uh, 0 0.020 0 is the low that I saw uh, 19.019 and that just spiked to 0 0.027 so somewhere in that 0 0.02 it, it seems to be kind of maybe balancing around 0 0.024 mark spec on the zec is uh, spec on the deck is 0 0.022 so it's in spec on wound flutter and I expect it to be because it's a brand new motor and a brand new capstan, brand new bushings, uh, belt and so forth. So that's good. I'm going to go over here now to a speed test. Um, speed test. And the speed's not adjustable on this deck. It is... Uh, servo controlled and the actual speed is at point three I mean let's say point three percent high of zero right in through there and that's okay I, I want my I want my decks to be slightly sharp rather than slightly flat. So 0.3% of 3000 Hertz would be 9 Hertz. That's that's pretty good. I, maybe Pavarotti could tell the difference between that and 3000 but I can't. And anyway that's that's what it is and I'm happy with that. It's not adjustable. And it, <clears throat> it's very steady on that. Okay, the other thing I want to do is I want to do a frequency response test. Um, I'm going to use a this TDK uh, high bias CD power. I've got this. Don't let this bother you. This is just a. This is a. a vinyl cover I have on top of the on top of the uh, bezel because I don't want to get my fingerprints on and scratch it. I've polished everything out. I've detailed the deck. It looks good. It will deliver with this on it and then you can do whatever you want. My bias here, I've just because I've already done this and I know where it's supposed to be, I biased this deck on a TDK essay tape which I can't find right now. It's, it's lost somewhere so I'm using this which is really close but it's a little bit brighter cassette and so I've got this biased about midway between the zero and the one spot 
on on my on my bias setting. So I'm going to do a frequency response test on the right and left channels. I want to I want to do the whole sweep. I don't want it to stop at a thousand, so I'm going to set it there, and I'll reset this. Set my memory so I can come back to it. Now one of the things on a on a three head deck is you can monitor the frequency response or whatever you're you're doing while you're recording it. That's great and it's a wonderful thing. However, uh, when the record and the playback heads are very close to each other, like they are on this deck and most decks outside of Nakamichi's and and uh, uh, reel to reels is that on the extreme high frequency, maybe say 16, 17, 18 kilohertz on up, um, there's a little bleed over, there's a little frequency bleed over, and so it's kind of a false set. And so I'll do the whole sweep on monitoring it, but then I'll go back and I'll replay it. So let's just start it. I'm, I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm zeroed out here. I'm just going to start. And I'm at minus 20 dB. I'll turn this up so it can be heard. I know it's a little hard to see, but I'm zoomed in as far as I can get. And I'm focused on the scope itself. Um, if I got the camera any closer, I wouldn't even be able to do what I'm doing now. It's just... Okay, this is the right channel first. You'll see it's dots, and it's appearing here, and then pretty much flat to here. And what I'll probably do, if I can figure out how to do it, I'll take a picture of this and try to put it into the video. And here we're on the low end. Just to orient you, this is uh, minus 20 dB at the extreme left end of the, of the screen. This line here is 20 kilohertz, and then it ends up here at 40 kilohertz. So you're seeing that Okay, it's coming in. It's coming in here at you know plus 20 kilohertz, coming in about 25 kilohertz. But this is way attenuated. Each one of these uh, horizontal scales is 5 dB. So okay, it's got that. Let's rewind it and go back. Like I say, that's that's the actual frequency response that we're reading off the tape as we're making the tape. So I'm going to replay this now, and and start it again. And so now we're doing only the tape, and it's close, but there's a little tiny bit of difference here. And I there is that difference, and so I want to do it the correct way. Um, this line here I can see is 20 kilohertz, and I can estimate that that first dot is about maybe 2 dB, minus 2 dB off of the datum, which is minus 20 dB. So this is probably minus 22 dB. And then we'll, you can see that the low end is exceptional. Uh, I have a word or two to say about that too. And here comes the left channel. Let's left channel is dash lines so the left is a dash the right is a dot same thing uh, pretty much exactly on the left channel right at 20 db i mean right at 0 db or minus 20 db on the 20 kilohertz uh, hash mark so we'll let this finish up and then i'll go back and i'll do my best to explain what this means
Okay. Very good. So now, if you look right here, this is the frequency. And here's the left channel, here's the right channel. At 20 hertz on the low end, at, we're, we're at minus 20 dB on the datum here at 1,000 uh, hertz. So at minus 20 dB, I mean, I, I, okay, well, my camera paused itself. I don't know why, but it did. And so <laughs> I'm going to try and kind of re-say what I already said before. Um, and I'm not sure where it paused, so was talking about the frequency response and I'm not sure I showed it so I'm going to show it again um, down here at 20 Hertz 20 Hertz left channel right channel I'm at 19.9 19 DB um, that's at 20 Hertz and then over here the little low spot is at about 27 Hertz minus 23.1 minus 21.7 this is within spec the spec is um, 20 I've got it right behind me here in the computer uh, 15 to 18 plus or minus 3 dB on a chrome tape this is well within spec uh, I want to come over here and show where our datum is at a thousand Hertz that's just kind of the the middle spot here roughly okay so a thousand Hertz so we're 19.9 19.5 so roughly 20 minus 20 DB and uh, what we're looking for is anywhere between minus 17 minus 23 between according to the manual 15 to 18 kilohertz 15 Hertz to 18 kilohertz we're going to go up here. I have an 18, I have a 17.5, 18.5. Those are the, the steps on this deck. Um, 18.5 kilohertz. So I'm 19 dB and 18.5. That's well within the 17 to 23 range that they're calling for. If I go up to 20, I've got 21.2 and minus 19.6 again well within the range and actually exceeding the factory spec on it now right I'm just going to get this out of the way here right get the cursor out of the way um, right here at about 18 well 19 it, it, it's hard to know exactly but you notice a little bump here there is a little bump there and that can be biased out with the bias control here but this rise here and this rise here on the low end is is what I call the JVC brochure bump this was done at the time this deck was built at the time of the the spec wars and it was a wonderful time to be around because all the companies were competing and uh, doing their 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 utmost to out uh, do each other on their deck specs and and all these different things. Nakamichi was just kind of blowing everybody away with their specs. They had a different EQ and so they were competing. They weren't doing apples to oranges, but it's still they were they were competing this way and it was great. It, it was it, imagine what it would be if it continued today. But um, this spec is kind of out of the ballpark because yes it's there and you can hear it I mean it's there but you can't really hear it I can't hear you can't hear it 10 kilohertz 15 kilo or uh, 10 Hertz 15 Hertz you can't hear that you can't hear at 20 kilohertz either I certainly can't my hearing stops at about you know 14 14 and a half uh, the older you get the worse it gets especially for men so these things are kind of relative they do affect subharmonics on the high end and I, I believe that's a big thing and I, I it's one of the reasons I think that the tape sounds much better than 
uh, uh, CDs or certainly MP3s or anything like that. But that's what that little bump there is. It doesn't bother me on the high end because it's the part that leaves the tape after you've played it for a, a couple dozen times. That high end um, it disappears. It just it wears out. It wears off the tape, and then it kind of flattens out. So, but anyway, that's characteristic of the deck. My, that's my theory on what JVC did. I don't know that, but I know that it's typical of this series, and um, and that's my opinion. <laughs> that's what it's good for. You can take it for what it's worth. All right, so we've done those. Um, all right, the other thing I want to do is a distortion test. Um, I'm I'm myself I'm very happy with the frequency response and how it performs that way uh, I'll say a little bit about that in a second what my impressions are of the sonics of it but I want to do a distortion test um, these are recorded hot I think the the spec on this deck is they want you to record off of the uh, user manual they want you to record a normal type 1 type 2 tape at plus 6 dB and a metal tape at I think it's plus 10 dB I'm going to do just a normal tape here and do the distortion test on it uh, I'm going to do it at 0 dB and then uh, because I'm done with uh, because I'm done with my uh, uh, frequency response test I'm going to go ahead and run up the uh, the input higher and see where we end up. They actually do this at, let's see, I think they do it at plus 3 dB is where they're doing the distortion test. Yeah, uh, no, 1%. Uh, it's a little bit hard to understand the way they wrote it here. They say K3, 0.5%, uh, total harmonic distortion, 1%, metal tape. At zero. Okay, no, they're saying zero. I thought they did this higher. Okay, so it's zero, which is where I'm at. So I'll just go ahead and start it recording. And I can come back to this if I want to. I'm going to go over here to third order distortion. Okay, I had to reset myself here. The camera keeps shutting off. I don't understand it. But anyway, I'm doing the distortion test here. I want to um, I want to do it at zero dB and then run up the input level because uh, I want to see where it ends up. And I've seen other specs on this deck, and uh, I'm not seeing them right now on the service manual I'm looking at. But I know that it has other specs somewhere in this manual, and I think it takes it up to plus three dB. So I'm I'm going to run it up there manually and and uh, watch how it does. So I'm going to start recording here. I'm going to start my outputs and my inputs. And here we are at uh, left channel, right channel. They're very close, very similar, pretty much exactly. And I'm going to just keep running up here. I'm going to go up to 0 dB on the deck. And I have set levels on this deck with a good level tape and take it up to the just to the peak of the 0 dB it's a nice sensitive input control so here we are at about 0 0.48, 0 0.49, 0 0.45 somewhere in through there at 0 dB at the peak of 0 dB I'm going to take it up now to uh, estimating somewhere around 3 dB I mean even at 4 dB you can watch the okay I want to take it up to 6 because if I remember correctly that's where my manuals asking me to be okay so I'm at plus plus 6 dB on the inputs and I'm at you know, still under 1% distortion, which is excellent, and it's within spec. Um, I, I'm looking here, the manual is a little bit difficult on this, but 
so I can go back and I can redo the I can redo this with the actual tape but it'll be similar on this because of the frequency that it's running at okay there we go you put it up here so you can hear it start the inputs you can re-watch it. it it won't change at all um, it the difference is when you get up above 16 17 kilohertz that's where you see the difference in the tape okay so 0 dB we're at 0.4 percent um, coming up here to plus 4 dB up in the point five and, and this deck these decks get recorded hot I think I said this I don't know if it got cut out of the video but if you look at the manual um, these are supposed to be recorded on a type 1 type 2 tape at point uh, to plus 6 DB right here so here we are at one you know it's maxing out 1.1 percent in other words the distortion on the deck is well within spec and um, I'm I'm very happy with that so one of the things I want to say about specs are great they're wonderful we love them uh, I love to do this but it really comes down to what does it sound like and the way that I judged this so the way that I tested it for sound for sonics was I put uh, I used a, a uh, SA, a TDK SA tape, chrome tape. I have about three or four different uh, sources that I, I, I listen to. Of course, Jennifer Warren's, everybody knows those. Uh, I listen to a couple of tracks off the uh, DALI CD, uh, even a couple of tracks off the XLO test CD. This has a great switch here for monitor between tape and source and it's not a toggle switch or a, a rocker switch so if you if you don't look at the indicator you don't know what you're listening to so what I do is I level out um, I, I bias the tape and I set the levels on it using the um, the analyzer by voltage but then I go back and do it audibly if I have to tweak it a little bit so that I can't tell the difference between the source and the tape I, I tweak it just a little bit so that I can I, I try to fool myself is what I'm trying to do I'm trying to not know whether I'm listening to the tape or the source based on the volume typically speaking a person will always pick the highest volume as the one that sounds better even if it's a DB you'll still perceive that as sounding slightly better so I do that I put on a, a high quality pair of headphones very high quality headphones I turn off all my uh, um, fluorescent lights uh, take any wall pucks any uh, uh, anything out of the system here out of the electrical that might be causing interference you know any of the the switching transformers are really bad for that sort of thing uh, and 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 then I just listen and I go back and forth monitoring between tape and source I put one of these tracks on any of these different kinds of tracks and I monitor between the source and the tape and I try to pick out which is which and if I hit this button a few times like this without knowing what I'm looking at without knowing what I'm listening to and my levels are correct I can fool myself I can not know what I'm what I'm listening to what I'm listening to the tape or the source and I did that and what I found was that about half of the time I picked the wrong thing half of the time I thought I was listening to the source and I was actually listening to the tape and the other half was the opposite way that tells me that it's not 
adding anything it's not coloring the, the the music it's not adding or subtracting anything to it I fooled myself and that's kind of an important thing that's that's what we're looking for we're looking for the 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 tape the recording to sound you know not just as good as but in many cases sounds better than the actual source I think it does in a lot of cases but at least in 50% of the source 50% of the time I perceive that as being uh, superior to the source I also I should say I'm, I'm also doing this on uh, this, everything's hooked up to an isolation transformer um, you know if I don't know if maybe my 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 lines are particularly dirty here, but I can say that that makes a big difference. If you're not running off an isolation transformer for your audio, do yourself a favor. One of the other things that I do when I'm I'm analyzing these these decks is I'll put in a tape, I'll remove the inputs, and I'll make a recording at you know full volume. Full, full input volume, full gain. I listen to it with headphones, and just listen for any anomalies that are there. I'll just make a blank recording, nothing in there. I'll use a clean tape or a recorded tape. It doesn't matter. But I'll listen for what I'm hearing. If there's any sort of snap, crackle, pop, any of that sort of thing that is there that shouldn't be there. That's one of my other tests that I do. There's nothing on this deck. It's absolutely clean all the way through. I can't find a flaw. So I know I spend a lot of time on the recording end, but that's because I record. <laughs> when tapes started to go away and the manufacturers stopped producing them, I bought uh, several cases. And so I still record on tape. I still like it. I still prefer it. And the recording part of it to me is, is very important. If you're not recording, then you know the information is kind of superfluous, but uh, it still demonstrates the playback ability. And so, um, you know, my my best evaluation of it is that you know, in audiophile lingo, people use the word transparent a lot, and they overuse it. I don't know how you can say something's transparent if you weren't there for the recording. Um, if you're listening to something that someone else recorded, you don't know if it's transparent. You know what the coloration is, and you know how good or poor it sounds. But when you're actually a being the deck on a recording that you're making yourself, you can say whether it's transparent or not. And to me, this deck makes a very transparent recording. It's neutral. It doesn't add or subtract anything. It's accurate and I like that. If you're trying to use uh, tape as something that adds a lot of bloom or adds a lot of warmth, this deck's not going to do it. This deck is going to give you an accurate reproduction of what the source material is and sound the same way it does coming through the electronics of the deck. So that's my evaluation. That's what I, I believe. Um, it will get better because I've only maybe put 20, 25 hours of time on this deck since I've recapped it and these capacitors do sound better as they break in more um, and I'll, I'll put some more time on it as I can but I'm pretty happy with the performance of it where it is right now so if you've been with me this far and <laughs> suffered through all this thank you if you have any questions, please contact me through uh, Reverb or uh, through my website, whatever. Call me, and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. So thank you. Thank you very much for watching.